Guys, SpaceX just dropped a huge update about their master plan for the future, the facilities they're planning to build, their vision for Starship operations, and so much more. This is a massive update, so grab your cup of coffee and sit with me for this one. The name of the update is Evolving the Multi-User Spaceport. Right at the beginning, SpaceX mentions that back in March 2025, astronauts from the FRAM-2 mission watched a Falcon 9 launch while on their way to their own rocket launch. That moment was a glimpse into the future, where seeing a rocket take off could be as normal as seeing an airplane today. And yeah, they're not joking when they say they want rockets to become as common as planes. In fact, in the very next section, they flat out state, launch sites of the future need to be fully operationalized like an airport. That means SpaceX is planning to run rocket operations just like a typical airport. Multiple launches a day from multiple providers able to launch when ready, supporting all kinds of vehicles and missions. To make that happen, SpaceX says they're working closely with federal regulators, federal ranges, and industry partners. They're also investing in scientific research, like blast and acoustic studies, new physical infrastructure, and modern operational tools, all aimed at building safe, high-frequency, next-gen spaceports right here in the U.S. SpaceX makes a strong point. The work at Cape Canaveral has already proven that a dramatic increase in the nation's launch rate is possible, with real collaboration. Thanks to solid partnerships with NASA, the FAA, and the U.S. Space Force, their Falcon rockets are now launching and landing about every two days on average. That's a pace many once thought would make it impossible for other launch providers to share the same range. But that clearly hasn't been the case. In fact, Falcon is on track to launch over 100 times from Florida alone in 2025, all while other launch providers continue their normal operations. SpaceX often works directly with those providers to coordinate and de-conflict launches. In some cases, they've even stood down from their own missions to give others the time they needed, just like planes taking turns on a busy runway. To support this high launch rate, SpaceX has invested heavily in infrastructure upgrades. With Falcon, they've developed new tools for monitoring the range and weather, managed communication frequencies between different vehicles, and scaled up systems for storing key launch commodities like nitrogen and helium. All of this ensures that their rapid cadence doesn't interfere with other operators using the same supply lines in Florida. But that's all about Falcon 9. What about the much bigger vehicle, Starship? Launching something that massive as frequently as an airplane definitely comes with its own challenges. Not long ago, there was news that SpaceX was seeking FAA approval to launch and land up to 44 Starships and Super Heavy boosters per year from Pad 39A. That raised some concerns. According to reports, future airline flights in Florida might face rerouting and delays lasting 40 minutes to two hours during Starship Super Heavy missions from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. FAA officials even shared maps showing aircraft hazard zones created by Starship launches, re-entries, and landings. These hazard areas could cause significant aircraft rerouting, including ground stops at multiple airports, and that could lead to flight cancellations. The size and location of these airspace closures depend on a lot of factors, like the mission type and flight history. As Starship proves itself, these zones can be adjusted, either expanded if issues arise, or reduced as reliability improves. That said, even though hundreds of Falcon 9s have launched from the Cape, they produce much smaller air and sea hazard zones than what's currently proposed for Starship. Still, SpaceX addresses this directly in the new update, writing, with additional investment in the necessities for launch at each site, including power, data, commodities, and transportation, we're confident in the launch industry's ability to provide creative solutions to ensure public safety and enable improved launch deconfliction even at significantly higher numbers of launches. Basically, for safety, temporary closures around the launch pad are necessary during certain launch activities. But SpaceX says they've worked hard to reduce these clear times and distances using real-world data from tests and launches, and to streamline what's traditionally a very complex process. As the Starship program matures and proves its reliability, these clear zones can shrink significantly, just like they did with Falcon over time.
And this doesn't just apply to the immediate launch pad area. It extends to the air and sea paths along the rocket's flight trajectory. Today, Falcon 9 has minimal impact on air traffic for most launches, and SpaceX is aiming for the same with Starship. Another point is that the propellant loading process for Starship is designed to take under an hour, which helps keep those closure durations short. One more thing SpaceX acknowledged as having a major impact on safety zones is the type of fuel Starship uses. Historically, most U.S. rockets have used either hydrogen or RP-1 slash LOX propellants. But now, with many next-gen rockets, including Starship, running on liquid oxygen and methane, the game is changing. The problem is that there hasn't been much historical data on the blast effects of LOX methane rockets. So, government authorities have had to rely on highly conservative safety models, resulting in very large clear zones. Not necessarily because they're unsafe, but because we just didn't have enough data to justify smaller, more accurate ones. To fix that, SpaceX, working closely with NASA, the FAA, the U.S. Space Force, and other stakeholders, has spent years researching the yield characteristics of LOX methane propulsion. This includes comprehensive testing at their rocket development facility in McGregor, Texas, along with real-world data from Starship's experimental flights and even some of its ground test failures. With this data, SpaceX has developed a robust, physics-based yield model to help fill the gap in scientific knowledge about LOX slash methane systems. In fact, in the new update, they even shared footage of methane-oxygen intact impact testing conducted at McGregor. Pretty wild stuff. As part of bringing Starship launches to Florida, SpaceX has proposed new clear zones tailored to the vehicle's various configurations and operations. These zones are based on real-world test data, factor in total explosive yield, and include a built-in conservative safety margin all to create zones that are not just safer, but also more precise and less disruptive. While the technical analysis is specific to Starship, SpaceX is sharing this data with government agencies to help guide safety standards for future LOX methane-powered launch systems. And with this new methodology, SpaceX says their confident Starship operations won't interfere with other launch providers at Kennedy Space Center or Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. According to the update, the proposed clear zones will have no impact on other active launch pads or even on north-south traffic at Cape Canaveral. SpaceX also emphasized that they're looking forward to having open, honest, and science-based discussions with their industry partners as the spaceport of the future takes shape. The next section of the update is called Being Good Neighbors. Right now, the U.S. has only a handful of viable launch sites for reaching orbit, and Cape Canaveral is especially important because it's the only site that offers direct access to low- and mid-inclination orbits and geostationary orbit, which are crucial for commercial, national security, and science missions. SpaceX already operates from multiple launch sites, including Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, and Starbase in South Texas. And in the near future, they plan to build additional Starship launch pads in Florida. But sharing spaceports means SpaceX has to be a good neighbor, not just to other launch companies, but also to the surrounding community. Right now, Falcon rockets launch from Florida multiple times a week, without causing major disruptions to fishing, shipping, or aviation. That's thanks to close coordination with partners like the FAA, U.S. Coast Guard, and U.S. Space Force. SpaceX works closely with the FAA to safely integrate launches and landings into the national airspace system. Because of that coordination, most air routes around the Space Coast stay open during launches, and any temporary closures are often lifted just three minutes after liftoff. Now, they're applying the same approach to Starship. For example, during Flight 10 from Starbase, the FAA was able to reopen all affected airspace within 10 minutes, with some areas cleared in just 7 minutes. And there was no major impact to air traffic. SpaceX says they're confident this model will continue working as Starship launches ramp up. Just like they did with Falcon, SpaceX expects aircraft hazard areas for Starship to shrink over time as the vehicle proves itself. With Falcon 9, for instance, the size of the AHAs for Starlink missions has dropped by about 66% since 2022. 
It's worth noting that the hazard zones published in the recent draft environmental impact statement for Launch Complex 39A are intentionally conservative. They're designed to cover worst-case scenarios, not what typically happens. In reality, SpaceX expects the actual AHAs to be much smaller and shorter in duration, backed by the real-world data they're collecting from Starbase. To wrap things up, SpaceX points out that demand for access to space is higher than ever before. It's long been national policy that a strong, healthy, commercial space sector serving both government and private customers is key to keeping that access open and sustainable. In fact, recent executive actions have reinforced this, calling for more frequent launches from U.S. spaceports to support national defense, NASA's exploration missions, and the broader economy. And that's where Starship plays a huge role. It's not just about pushing boundaries. It's a critical part of achieving national goals, like sending American astronauts back to the moon through NASA's Artemis program. But SpaceX isn't the only one counting on the ability to launch rapidly and reliably from places like Florida's Space Coast. If we want to meet these big national goals, we need the entire launch industry to step up, to fly more often, more reliably, and ideally from multiple launch sites. That kind of flexibility helps us stay resilient in the face of unpredictable factors like bad weather. What's exciting is that, for the first time ever, we're seeing a real, focused effort to move beyond the traditional slow and complex way of launching rockets. The vision is to shift toward a more dynamic, airport-like model, where launches are as routine as flights, not rare events. SpaceX and many others believe that if we can truly unlock fast, reliable, and frequent access to space, it will open the door to incredible opportunities and real-world benefits here on Earth. That's why they remain committed to constantly pushing the limits of launch technology, while keeping safety and reliability front and center every step of the way. So that's the end of this very long SpaceX update. Congrats if you made it all the way through. At least now you've got a better idea of the many challenges SpaceX is facing in its mission to launch one of the biggest rockets ever built, and the steps they're planning to take to make that vision a reality.